you so much for joining. My name is Audrey Chang. I'm a director at Google Cloud's Global Strategic Initiatives team, responsible for bringing the best of Google Cloud technologies and Alphabet technology capabilities to customers and partners such as yourselves. I'm really excited for the showcase that we have planned for you today with Mercado Libre and Grupo Boticario and how they're exploring and using generative AI technologies to innovate at a faster clip, bringing better product and content discovery experiences to their many users, and also creating efficiencies within the business to enable that type of business vision and the years forward to come. And so I'm pleased to be joined here with Nicholas um, Presta, Senior Engineering Manager of Machine Learning at Mercado Libre. Now, Mercado Libre is the largest online commerce and payments platform in all of Latin America. And you think about how that came to be, it's because they've built a trusted, agile, and people-centric platform with the vision to democratize commerce and finances for the entire continent. And it's because of that vision that it's no wonder why the number of unique active uh, users on their platform has grown by over 50% year over year. Now let's think about that. In terms of boosting experiences, that's 144 million unique people whose experiences need to be contextualized, understood, served at any given point in time. Not just right now, but in the next three minutes, in the five minutes after that, in the months later on. And so it's an incredible vision and an incredible responsibility. And we're so happy to have Mercado Libre as one of our trusted customers to an, able to enhance that vision for them and their customers. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you, Audrey. I'm also really happy to be joined by Marcus Bittencourt, the head of data and AI architecture and platforms at Grupo Boticario. Now, what began as a custom-made wellness experience that was created through an apothecary has now evolved into an entire beauty ecosystem comprised of over six brands, an institute, as well as a foundation, and has now become one of Brazil's most beloved beauty and cosmetics brands. And they have a really amazing vision um, and are just getting started on generative AI. And I'm very excited to have Marcus speak to you all about what they have in store, what they've built, and how they're thinking about the future for their business. Welcome, Marcus. Thank you, Audrey. So let's dive in. I know you're all anxious and wanting to hear more. Nicholas, I'd love to start out with you. Can you tell us more about how Melly embarked on the generative AI vision how did you get started? What did you think about the impact to your business and customers? And what did you build? OK, great. So Audrey, the first uh, hint that we had a problem came when, for example, if a user searched for uh, like a computer that allows me to play Fortnite and make video edition, uh, we show up things like a lot of computer books or some video games. So. Not really good suggestions there. Um, or for example, if you type in our search bar, um, I want a gift for my daughter who loves soccer and is fan of Lionel Messi, uh, we suggest things like uh, a hair pendant with the word daughter and grab it on it. So no soccer related items, no messy merchandise. And this is because traditionally, our search engine relies heavily on word matching. And with word matching, for example, if a user look for Samsung TV, what we do is we try to find all the items with the word Samsung and the word TV in the item's title or attributes, fetch them all, rank them, and show that final listing to the user. Um, this approach works really well for a lot of queries, but if the user want for look for a more complex query, like I want to give for my daughter who loves soccer and is fan of Lionel Messi, then this approach of word matching just don't work. Uh, and this is a problem. Like We don't want any little gear to miss out her gift because of a search blunder. So to solve this problem, we start using embeddings for item representation 
So basically, what we do is we generate a vector embedding for represent each item, and then insert all these embeddings in a Google's vector search database. And then when a user makes a query, what we do is we compute the embedding for that user's query and ask to vector search to fi find the closest matching items related to that query embedding. And with this approach, we can increase the quality of the result listing, especially for these complex queries, for these uh, queries really hard to, to find items with word matching. Um, and this helps our buyers to find what they need, but also this allows our sellers to connect more efficiently with the buyer's needs. That's really lovely. I mean, I'm hearing so many great things. I'm hearing vector search, combining that with embeddings, to drawing those relationships between understanding the user intent, understanding what they're trying to search for. But when those content are not available, how do you surface substitutes? How do you train these models to learn and relearn and continue to evolve over time? And so I think the approach that you've used, Nicholas, you and your team has been remarkable. I mean, can you say a bit more to the audience about what results you've experienced thus far? Sure. Well, one important thing to understand is the fact that for our e-commerce business, the search engine is like a really core piece. So to illustrate this, uh, like most of the successful purchases start with a query made by the user in our search bar. And like half of these distance queries that user made are complex ones. So if we can improve the quality for these complex queries, the, the results quality for these complex queries, um, then we can increase the overall click rate, a conversion rate, by a significant amount. Uh, so that's really huge. Yeah, this is, these are really important points, and I see a lot of you nodding in the audience as well. Um, it's not just a matter of uh, surfacing the breadth and depth of the content catalog. It's just also contextualizing, understanding the history, understanding the current clicks, understanding the conversion, and creating that overall delightful user experience for these long tail queries. And I think over time, what I'm really looking forward to for your business, Nicholas, is seeing how the nature of these complex queries will will change over time um, so that the long tail queries are no longer long tail queries. They're, they're actually quite well understood. And then the little girl that's searching for messy soccer gear isn't going to end up with a random necklace, but rather a jersey that's customized to her with her favorite colors, with the images that, that she has responded to. And th that can be a better delightful experience, not only for the shopper, but also for the seller. So it kind of cuts both ways. And I think that's what's really remarkable about the strategy and the approach that you've implemented. Absolutely. That's wonderful. So I'd love to now turn over to you, Marcus. Um, in terms of Grupo Boticario, can you tell the audience a bit more about the vision that you all have for your business and what you've built and seen so far as far as results? Great, great. And thanks for coming, people. And at the Grupo Boticario, we have a lot of expectation about generative AI. We will increase and change our way to do that, to do the things. And then when we start to do these strategies, we are focused on increase and better our customer experience, but not forgot the efficiency that we can uh, increase and do for our employers. And then we combine them to create a new way to work with Gen AI inside the company. And Grupo Boticario has a strong essence about uh, to take care of the people. And then we create a context that we call the love tech. is a, a way to work with technology and take care of the people together. And then using this concept that we create, something that we called to work with the technology, but not replace the people. And then use the technology to increase, to reach more with the people that we do. And this is, was uh, our high expectation about that and the way that you see Generative AI integrate in our jobs and our things that we do. Well, let's think about that for a minute, right? He's not talking just about the technology. He's talking about the vision, the feeling, the brand integrity that, 
that he wants to impart, that Boticario feels it's important to impart on its customers. I think that's really important because at Google Cloud, this is where we start. We, we want to give you the technology tools to enable your vision um, for the future and keep the brand whole and keep those experiences really, really amazing. Um, do you want to touch upon, I know you've all built a generative AI platform with multiple LMs. Do you want to touch upon some of those goals and lessons, Marcus? Yes, for sure. And the point that we start to work with generative AI, we understand how can we improve this for the teams. And then we start developing some uh, ways to do that, starting for our sales representatives that uh, using a chatbot that will respond that we answer simple questions and offer for our teams to work uh, where they can improve more and offer more value for the company. And uh, using this, uh, this force, this, this way to work, to do something that is more value for the company and more complex activities that GenAI is not ready to, to do yet. And for our uh, franchising, we offer uh, a way to act in the first response, how we work, how many answers uh, normally in the, the company. And in this specific moment, we have 70% uh, of accuracy of this, uh, this action of a GNAI. And this is a good value for GNAI in, in, at the moment. And there we can offer a different way to work with that and not not increase our team exponentially. That is a concern that we have for the company. After that, we are developing a Gen AI platform that we call uh, for offer for our non-technical teams, a way to work with generative AI and offer a way to create and offer more context for Gen AI and do that with a simple way to do that and not, not be a technical problem, just technical person can solve. Uh, we call this concept of Gen AI self-learning services that we can offer the way to create Gen AI for no technical persons. This is the way that we are trying to use that and reach these this tasks because uh, we have a concept that we can use technology just to seek for, for technology. We are looking for the technology to solve problems and use it the, the right way in the specific moment, the scope that we apply it. That's really lovely. I think a lot of that speaks to why we develop these technologies here at Google Cloud as well. It's how do you enable customers such as both Icario to create a platform, make it easy to get started, have the tools that can enhance and augment the existing processes that you already have within your companies to minimize that level of change, but enable you to move faster, become more agile, and make more confident business decisions in a quicker way. Um, and I think, you know, as far as the nuggets, right, I love what I'm hearing in terms of, I'm hearing chatbot helping them answer common questions, reducing escalations, increasing operational efficiencies, making customers happy, helping them discover the products they know and love, and appreciate and can want to come back to buy. These are all really great use cases and I think we've yet to discover what is to come, but I'm really grateful to have partners such as yourselves to help us innovate and also influence what we create from a product direction standpoint. So I wanted to thank you both for all of these that you've shared today with the audience.